And so this is going to be a quick tutorial on how I edit my photographs for Instagram. I do all of that on an iPhone app called VSCO or Visco. It's brilliant, but when you first download it, it sometimes can be a bit overwhelming. It's not necessarily the most intuitive interface to use. So I know a lot of people get a bit confused by that. So I thought I would quickly show you how I use it and hopefully help you get started. So I keep it on my home screen. I use it all the time. And they've just updated it so it looks like this. If you've not downloaded the new update, yours might look a little bit different because this was quite a major update. So the first thing to say is I keep my Instagram gallery pretty much in my library. I don't store any other pictures in my library. I don't take photographs and keep them all in here. What you see in here is the final edited versions as the order that they're going on my Instagram. The reason for that was because Visco was a really helpful tool for planning your gallery. You could predict how things would line up next to each other and kind of work ahead. That's changed with the update, but I still think it's worth having all of your pictures together like that when you're editing because you want to be able to check the consistency in your colour and your tones if you're going to be posting to Instagram. So yours will look similar to this, but perhaps it's going to be empty if it's your first time using it, or it might be completely cluttered and have hundreds of pictures in, but that doesn't matter. We'll just start. We're going to bring in some pictures to edit. So hit the plus and it will take you straight to the last folder that you clicked on. So for me that's this folder called edit. If you want to choose a different folder you can press where it says import at the top and slide across to see your other folders. And there's a few pictures in here that I want to have a play with so I'm going to select those. The order you tap them in is the order it will import them into your gallery and when you're done hit the circle in the top right. So now it's added those to my library. To look at any of them closer you can double tap it and you press the cross to go back to that wider view. When you're in that view, you can also swipe to view all of them in that larger format. And again, press the cross to get out. So when you've got a picture selected, you've got some more options across the bottom. This one with the sliders is your main edit menu, which we're going to be playing with. The one with the three dots is your typical share. So you can take it to Instagram, you can take it to Twitter, etc. So first we want to edit it, so that was that one with the slider. Now Visco will take you straight into filters. Within that you then have these other options. So this is filters, the one we're on. And these are your tools. Um, they've changed the icons just recently with the update, but they are in the same order and they essentially look the same. So they're fairly easy to navigate. You won't need to use all of these tools all of the time. So I'm going to talk you through my favourite ones and what they do. and have a little think about the strength that we need to apply them with. I always say to people, edit first, then apply a filter. So that's counterintuitive to the way it brings you into the application, but I think it makes more sense because it's very hard to predict what a filter will do if the picture itself isn't true to life. Um, so my preference is to fix any problems first and then I can apply the filter with really predictable results. So the first thing that's bothering me about this picture is it's not quite centered. So I'm going to crop it to centre and I'm going to go for that option. The grid's really helpful for that and I'm going to go for about there. So then when you're done it's the circle again to confirm. The next thing that I often play with is exposure. So exposure is really how light or dark your picture is. If you take it down it makes everything a lot gloomier and if you take it up it makes everything a lot brighter. There's a little more detail on the moth when I go just up that one. So we're going to stick with that. The next one is temperature. Now temperature is how yellow or how blue your picture is. And it's useful if there's a funny light source coming in. So if you're under artificial light and it looks very yellow, you can bring it down and cool it down a little bit. Or if you just want a warmer or a cooler tone to your pictures in general. Um, I have a blog post about white balance and why it matters, especially for Instagram. And I would say... The main thing is to try and get a consistent tone of white in your pictures. So even on this one, the sky is white and I want to make sure that that's my usual white. But for me, that's normally just true to life. So next one along is contrast. This is something I don't really use very often, but there are times when something's just not quite come out right or the light was a bit funny or if you're trying to fix a problem um, and try and save a bad photo. Okay, So more contrast means the difference between light and dark is more pronounced I suppose and less means it's all a bit more hazy. Now I've turned it down I kind of like it a little bit. What do you think? Maybe minus one? 
And I do a lot of this. This backwards and forwards, turn and decide. Let's go with minus one just to see. Um, next one along then is to straighten and rotate. So if you've got tilty horizons, mine looks tilty there, but it's actually, because this is the view from my window, I know that's a hill that slants down. Um, and I want to keep the moth perfectly straight. So I'm gonna stick with pretty much how it was. This next one here is fade. Fade is a quality, it's quite similar to turning the contrast down and it's something that some of the presets will include and, and add automatically to your pictures. If you look at the sort of dark areas, it adds that haze. That's it quite strong. I would normally only be adding it one or two, really, if at all. Vignette is the dark edges you sometimes see on pictures. Turned up full to show you, it gives you that effect, but a little bit of it can be good draws your attention to the centre of the picture. Again, it's not something I use, but a lot of people use it with great effect. Tint is your other option when you're controlling your colour and your white balance. So if the temperature one went from um, blue to yellow, this goes from green to purple. It can be nice, so you see when I turn the green up, it gives them more depth of colour and a bit more richness to the picture. And it's also good for colour correction if you've got problems with your light or your temperature or your white balance. I like it with a bit more green in, so I'm going to stay with that. The next lot are ones I don't use an awful lot. Saturation is how much colour is or isn't. Um, there's a real trend for desaturated photos where they've not got much colour and they're almost nudging into black and white, so if that's your style, you can use this one. And shadow save and highlight save are the next two. So this is really for fixing something that's gone wrong with your exposure, perhaps if the light areas are overexposed or the shadows are underexposed and you want to try and change that and make it the opposite without changing the whole image's exposure. You can play around with these just to show you what they do. It's really hard to show you without a picture with the problems but it lightens any dark bits up and tries to leave the light bits untouched and this one does the opposite. Sharpen, if you've got a bit of blur or a lacking a bit of definition, that might be able to save it. This adds grain, so that film texture we see sometimes on old photographs, this sort of replicates that and you can add that grain effect. If I turn it up quite high, you'll be able to see. Again, a subtle amount is usually the best, if at all. I'm not gonna go for that. I never use the highlight tint or the shadows tint, but it works on the same areas as the highlight and shadow save, but you can choose a bit of color to put in there. I've not really found a way that that's helpful for me. This is your horizon fix. Most people are familiar with this because of Instagram having brought it in. I'll press the cross because I don't want to save any of that. So you've got horizontal and vertical fixes for that. The vertical one's really good if you're taking pictures of, say, houses and buildings from the street and you get that really strong sense of perspective. You can just bring it in a bit. So those are the tools. The ones I use on a day-to-day -day basis, I tweak exposure, I sometimes tweak temperature and I usually crop and that's really it from this page unless there's a problem. And one point to say with exposure is sometimes it can surprise you and so if you're looking at a picture and you're not sure what to do, sometimes dropping the exposure further than you normally would or hooking it up further than feels comfortable just to see how it looks can surprise you and save the picture. Okay, so when you're done with your editing tools, you press that arrow at the bottom again to bring these options up and you remember the colour wheel that was our filters. So because I know my favourites, I tend to go straight to them. When I was starting out, I would literally tap each one, appraise and move on and see which ones I preferred. And sometimes I would end up saving hundreds of copies and taking this to my boyfriend and saying, do you like this one or this one, this one or this one? And driving him insane. But the more you do it, the more you tune your eye into what you like and what it is you're trying to create and the easier it gets to recognize your own sort of style when you hit on it. Whenever you've applied a filter, if you tap it again, you can dial it up and down and that changes the strength that the filter's applied. I tend to use my filters pretty much full blast sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. If you need to apply more filter, you can save a picture, re-import it and apply a bit more. So people, I think, can be a bit frightened of using them and they think that it makes their pictures look really obviously edited. And it really depends on your own style, but I would say most people who are using it, I think are using them full blast. And unless you're looking at everybody's Instagram and thinking this is completely over-edited and I hate it, then maybe trust yourself and just try it out. So then I just clicked done when I'd chosen the filter in the circle again 
and then you get your finished photograph. So when I spoke earlier about making sure your whites match, I can see from this one that my whites here are the same as the whites in the rest of the pictures. My greens are quite different if you compare with this one. The greens there are quite blue toned and here they're much more yellow and a lot warmer. But the skies are a fairly good match. I still think this one looks a little bit too yellow so to fix that I go back in and I go back to that temperature gauge to turn it down just a little bit bluer. Maybe somewhere around here. And that's that issue of Instagram where things are presented as a gallery side by side. It's quite different to how you would edit a photograph just for its own sake. If a picture was going to stand alone, I may well have just left the edit as it was. But because I want to keep that cohesion, it's important to make sure that there's a bit of a flow to it. If you are new to the app and you haven't bought any filters, you won't have quite so many as I have here. But if you scroll all the way to the end of your filter options, you see that shop icon and it will take you to their store where you can buy more presets for a few pounds. They come in packs and it can be quite difficult to know how they will work on your own photography because it just gives you examples of other people's. But I would say kind of play around, see which ones you're drawn to. Every now and again they have good offers where you can get all the presets for a certain rate. Um, so look out for that as well. My favourites that I use most frequently are these ones in the A range, the red ones. And I'm also quite fond of F2. So to save them, you can save them to your camera roll and you get a choice of sizes. But if you're saving it as an archive copy that you're going to back up somewhere, always go for the biggest one. And that's really it. I'm not doing anything vastly different, I imagine, to what the rest of you are all doing. These aren't particularly inspiring pictures, but hopefully it's given you an idea.